Hello and welcome to the Indian Writers Forum and News Click. Today, we are joined by Sangeeta Barua Pisharadi, the author of the new book, Assam, The Accord, The Discord, which traces in detail the history of the Assam Accords and the events that happened after that, culminating in the National Register of Citizens. Thank you, Sangeeta, for joining us. Thank you. Sangeeta, so this book, in this book, you've actually gone into great detail, in fact, starting right. many centuries ago, actually, and tracing the causes uh, which led to the Assam agitation initially, as well as for in today what we see uh, in the, with the National Register of Citizens, the Citizenship Amendment Bill, and the impact these issues have had on people in Assam. So before we go into some of those details, uh, just to talk about a very current sit uh, situation that we are facing right now. Mm -hmm. So after the NRC list was released and 19 lakh people were excluded, what has been the response from the ground, so to speak? How are the various sections uh, receiving this issue? See, already a lot of news reports have covered this. Nobody is happy. Right. Okay. So people who were initially supporting the NRC are not happy, saying a lot of undocumented migrants have found place, yeah. while the genuine citizens are out. Mm -hmm. Then the people who were uh, opposed to it are also saying, see, we, we said so. So th this is uh, like even, even say, uh, if you see politically also, mm -hmm. none of the parties have primary to begin with the BJP, right. uh, which, was, uh, which has been batting for it, uh, not happy. So the ground situation right now is, um, you know, apart from if you say the political thing, nobody is happy, already, already politicking has, uh, has begun at a different level. But if you talk about uh, common people, uh, they are actually staring at a situation where, um, you know, they'll have to, they, they, it's, there's a lot of uncertainty, right. uh, people who are out. So they, they will have to go to the foreigners tribunal now um, for an appeal. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, only yesterday there was a, a, another amendment to the foreigners tribunal order which says that it's mandatory actually mm -hmm. in a way. So if you don't go for an appeal, the DM, the, the, you know, uh, within your jurisdiction can actually uh, seek an opinion from the foreigners right. tribunal. So in a way, it is all uh, now, you, everybody has to go through the foreigners tribunal, uh, uh, the procedure, and uh, they also don't know, suppose the tribunals declare you a foreigner, will you be taken to the detention centers, mm -hmm. which was the case earlier. Right. So, and uh, if you are not, and you are still declared a foreigner, you have to go to the higher courts. Mm -hmm. So, which means a lot of money. Exactly. A lot of money, a lot of ability to face these you know, right. situations. And most of these people, actually, if you see their economic background, they're right. poor people. Right. So, and people also without very little documents. So, I, you know, so there is this fear on the ground right now if you talk about common people. Right. And there's also the issue of the Citizenship Amendment Bill, which has made it all the more urgent. We had Amit mm. Shah's statement That's recently, right. which said that except for, he didn't state Muslims and said everybody else would be uh, incorporated in various ways. So uh, one of the interesting things you traced in the book is the fact that the issue in Assam never had the kind of communal overtones That's which right. you associate with the rest of the country. It was never a Hindu-Muslim issue per <coughs> se, and there was far more complexity to it. So th is that situation still prevailing on the ground, or has all these recent developments polarized, brought in much more polarization? See, um, it's still, I can still say that, you know, uh, the communal angle, the Hindu-Muslim angle is uh, uh, still very low the ladder. If you talk to the common people on right. the ground, for them, this whole thing is migration issue, you know. So that is why even organizations like ASU or some students, you know, which spearheaded the six-year-long uh, anti-foreign agitation from 1979 to 1985, they also openly say that it is not against uh, any Hindus or Muslims. People who came to Assam, uh, say before March 24, 1971, that exclusive cut-off date for Assam, uh, for citizenship, they uh, can, uh, they, they'll stay on. Others, whoever they were Hindus or Muslims, will have to leave. So that is why there was a massive protest beginning with Assam against the Citizenship Amendment Bill. And they, finally, they, the BJP uh, couldn't bring it because right. there was so much opposition. Right. And we saw that only in the Northeast, while in the rest of India, the discussion was more around NRC. Right. But uh, this this was a, another angle that you know we should not miss because that is what will give you the full idea about how, where whether it is actually, people are actually looking at it as a Hindu-Muslim issue or not. So that's why I feel uh, that the protest against the uh, citizenship uh, uh, bill uh, in the Northeast, starting with Assam, is a very important cog in the entire thing. Right. Yeah. 
So also now let's go back a bit to the some of the key aspects of the book. So you trace the <coughs> history of the Assam agitation. That's right. Like you mentioned, from seventy nine to eighty five, and the accords in eighty five were signed at a moment there was a great amount of hope, like you pointed. That's some, right. Some some uncertainty also. But also there was some amount of hope, uh, some sense of uh, belief that Assam's uh, grievances, legitimate grievances of being ignored by the central government for years, for instance, would finally be resolved. And today, after all these years, we are in a situation where uh, in the, we have detention camps, we have polarization and we have a situation where people have been turned against each other. And like you said, the poorest are actually the ones who are suffering the most, mm. having to spend huge amounts of money in court, for instance. So, uh, do you see things could have happened any other way after the Accords? As in, did this necessarily have to be the path uh, in the last 20 or 30 years which ended up where we are today? See, that is what, you know, you have to, if you go back, you know, to trace the roots, you just see that the biggest, uh, um, you know, the problem in the entire thing was that the non-implementation of the main clauses of Assam Accord or on a very half shot kind of an effort. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, a couple of times the electoral rolls were in Assam were uh, um, uh, you know revised but uh, it was not to the satisfaction of the uh, uh, the uh, aggrieved parties. But uh, when you see uh, finally it ended up in that D or doubtful voter right. thing which is uh, happened. Uh, so uh, from the election commission and even during TN sessions time also there were a lot of uh, efforts were uh, made but you know um, it was the Congress government at the time or the other governments also uh, they just couldn't uh, 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 couldn't take that message to the people okay so that was there and then the and that also helped in a way you know the uh, or the right wing forces to also come up in the in the state in a big way because people have vote people voted hugely in the 2016 assembly elections they for the bjp for the first time assam has a bjp led government uh, and uh, this is because of the mainly because of the people's grievances that new delhi didn't do anything or right. congress didn't do anything right. uh, i also have to add that the uh, bjp and the other right wing forces rss and all worked on the ground uh, and uh, 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 you know stating that this was nothing being done uh, on this so but congress also has to be blamed for not implementing or not responding to that it's not that they didn't know this was being worked on right so uh, the nrc itself need not have in today in some senses the nrc has in become associated with the results of the accord actually. That's if, right. if, I don't know if you'd agree <coughs> with that, but that need not necessarily have been the case considering mm -hmm. how, for instance, uh, the NRC itself, like you point out in the book, was a very flawed exercise. Many districts were not even there mm -hmm. in the 1951, uh, in, in the original NRC. So uh, considering that, would there, could there have been any other way of implementing this rather than a, almost, an almost impossible task in some senses, mm -hmm. which is basically the NRC? See, NRC, uh, you know, there are this are uh, two uh, very different uh, ways of looking at it. When 1951, when the NRC was made, you have to see also what other steps the central government had taken in that state. Assam's citizenship issue had been a very old, old long-standing issue, and you have to also take into account, say, steps like uh, the uh, Immigration Expulsion Act that was brought specially for Assam, right. passed by the parliament in the 50s. Then the PIP thing, which was backed by the Indian IB and you know because the border was open on that side and uh, also the reason why the foreigners tribunal in 1964 came up was also because of the tense relationship between India and that side was East Pakistan because Pakistan at that time said that we would go to the United Nations because you have been pushing people your own Indian citizens uh, you're pushing to uh, into our territory and that's the reason that the central government came up with an executive order that we have to create some sort of judicial screen um, you know for the people to go through so foreigners tribunal actually was uh, put in place to uh, uh, also facilitate uh, you know creating foreigners so I'm not surprised what you were you know, one shouldn't be actually when you see this uh, there are a lot of reports that are coming against foreigners tribunals how biased it is and things like that 
the setup is such and so that's why there are so many amendments that are uh, that have been required and even now it's been done so uh, that is one thing and uh, so when 1951 nrc was uh, made it was also to look at whether uh, who was the citizen or who's the resident of assam or permanent resident but is this as you pointed out you know it was uh, it was people were not very concerned about it it was a government exercise and also done from the slips that were uh, 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 generated uh, uh, because of the 1952 census so it was not uh, uh, it was it was not to be a kind of a decision uh, you know people were not told that this is how you'll become either a citizen or a resident of assam finally it was nothing of that sort but when the assam agitation began there was a strong demand for nrc 1951 to be the uh, uh, the benchmark and that's the reason when you uh, you see the first uh, in 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 february 1980 when uh, the ASU leaders met in the Raganti for the first time. So, uh, since then, the talks began uh, uh, on the Assam issue. Uh, the the talks failed because uh, of the NRC the cut-off date. Cut -off date. Yes. Okay, because Indira Gandhi said that we want March 24, 1971, and why is that? Because that was the day Bangladesh was formed. So, uh, so there was uh, and throughout Indira Gandhi's time, uh, there was uh, the accord couldn't take place. No solution could come because of the contest between you know the two. Uh, uh, so this is a question of 1951 right. NRC. So, but then when finally the NRC was to be updated, uh, the decision was taken by Manmohan Singh government initially in 2005, and later on it became a court process. But the reason why it was decided to uh, update was also because it was it is going to be as part in 1971 cutoff date. So that was the thing. Then court came in later. It became a judicial process. Initially, it was a socio-political understanding between right. stakeholders. Right. But now, which has been turned into a judicial process mm -hmm. now. Yeah. So uh, has one of the has this process also led to the breakdown of this socio-political understanding between the stakeholders you're talking about? So, in a, uh, to a large extent, yes, because you see, it has been looked at like one section is going to be, um, you know, it's a, as, as if it has been brought against, you know, the, uh, one section of people, right. you know, it's just like that. So, uh, uh, but when people came together, why? Because all stakeholders came together because this issue is going on for a long time and everybody wanted a closure, even after the Assam Accord was not sorted. Uh, political parties came up, uh, new vote banks being made. But Assam didn't see peace and instead it saw a bout of insurgency. So people were tired, you know, that they wanted a solution once and for all. And that was the reason this whole, uh, consensus was uh, um, arrived at that the NRC, if we updated as per this and is one, once and for all it's done. So, but when it became a, a, a judicial process, then, um, you know, it's like, uh, uh, who, who, who's, is there a bias in the system? All these things came up. And then the other thing was also when BJP took over in 2014, okay, so uh, uh, in Delhi and then in 2016, when it started rolling, the whole process began to roll. So uh, BJP is not known for uh, being Muslim friendly. So, uh, and uh, the state has one of the largest population of Muslims and most of them are from you know, Bengal origin Muslims. So uh, that led to a lot of fear also on the ground and the other th among the uh, community uh, and also because the Assamese community uh, uh, I feel that many didn't get that that required response also at that time or assurance at the time because people also voted for the BJP so it was also looked at as a kind of a uh, you know um, so it became a it sent out a very clear message that it could be a communal message so a communal exercise so this was what I see that you know this is where you see this whole communal thing coming in and the ruling BJP really liked it because it also helped it to um, you know merge their interests w w uh, 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 into the people's interest uh, like a presenting people's uh, interest as their interest right. which is actually there is still a gap mm -hmm. so basically what you point out that the BJP's Hindu nationalism uh, their aim of trying to make that synonymous with Assamese 
nationalism for instance exactly so because you see you this is also you have to if you see in other uh, states like say gujarat you know your gujarati ashmita is now very hindu ashmita if you say uh, see say shipsena you know uh, what how they start marathi manush thing now it is very very uh, close to the uh, hindu nationalist uh, um, you know identity so i feel that uh, this is what also being experimented and tried out in assam too to turn into assam's ohomia jatiyatabad uh, uh, to a uh, kind of a Hindu jati or yeah. So also let's talk a bit about the detention camps. In your mm. book you talked about, you e e extensively chronicled some of the issues around mm. it, how mm. people suffer the amount of money they had to uh, raise from various sources to actually go through the legal process and even that often ends up in failure, the horrible conditions in detention camps. So what happens in a society where people who were neighbours at some point of time turn, turn out to be detention, subjects of detention camps or people who are placed in detention camps, what psychological impact do you see on a society when that happens? See, to begin with, I as an Assamese, I uh, completely oppose this. You know, I come from the community. Uh, the human rights issues and all come later. My question is to, uh, to also that uh, why should uh, the Assamese community take the moral burden okay of something which was actually centers responsibility the border control is centers responsibility why was it left to a state government on a very ad hoc basis to organize some corners of district jails into detention camps and uh, and where you know i have visited a lot of these camps and i have met people interviewed people who have come out of these uh, centers and you see that there is uh, there are poor people you know have nothing they've actually sold all the valuables that they had and uh, uh, ran from pillar to post you know and many of them are still in these camps because they have don't have the ability to uh, you know hire a lawyer and many cases have been also uh, due to the lawyer's fault yeah. because people don't know you know you just approach someone the lawyers also have no clue so there are all these things but I also don't agree that there are only uh, detention camps have people of only one community. Mm -hmm. This has been generally circulated, but it's not. I've right. been saying this. I would say there would be, uh, if not more, you know, uh, equal number of Bengali Hindus and uh, also Kosh Bangshi and other people, okay, there. But this was when in the run-up to the NRC, what we saw in the ma media, in mainstream media reports, is that only one community, say right. the Muslims, have been... So it's, I don't think, I don't think so. And uh, uh, because... Uh, if you go onto the ground, you will not see that. And then the other thing is, um, um, you know, now that has also been proven, like see, after the 31st August uh, final NRC came out, so many Bengali Hindus are out of it. So this is, uh, and it's not that the BJP didn't know about it, but they had to weaponize NRC for the general elections. And that is why the local BJP Hindu, uh, Bengali Hindu leaders who were protesting that, were actually, the party was saying that these are their uh, personal comments. Right. But the moment uh, the final NRC came, the state Assam BJP, uh, president, he made that uh, those MLAs sit beside him and address the press and said, we will deal with this. So it's not that the party didn't know it, but the party wanted to use it, use NRC. And we are seeing that now in these, these uh, uh, coming assembly elections also, it's been going to be used because from what you mentioned earlier about what Amit Shah it's said, you know, so it, it's, it's a weapon now. Right. But also at a larger level, do you think this approach, especially with the detention camps to host migrants, mm. is actually sustained? Because it's also a global issue. We mm. have the same mm. issue in the United States, for instance, people from Latin America coming from life for livelihood. And in Europe, people from, again, the African countries trying to escape war. And even in India, like you point out, once, for instance, climate change becomes a big issue, That's there's right. a possibility mm. of huge migration happening. So is there any discussion on the larger issue of how long you can not address migration as a as an issue per se rather mm. than looking at it purely in terms of uh, nationalities mm. uh, but in terms of having a broader perspective on migration is there any discussion 
around this. No, that is what I feel like. Uh, I, I, I've been, I said it in my book also that, um, you know, when the final draft NRC came out and over 40 lakh people were out, I saw a lot of uh, uh, thinkers, liberal thinkers outside of Assam, mainstream India, didn't go beyond the politics of the day. They were criticizing only the ruling uh, uh, dispensation, but didn't engage much with the issue. Because for me, you know, as a journalist, I always feel that if it has moved the masses, you have to engage with it, create a space and find out where is the problem and how well to address that. That didn't happen. Though, during the Assam agitation time, there were people from all streams outside of Assam who were trying to engage with the Assam issue. Like say, Gandhi Peace Foundation came up with a very good solution which the government engaged with at that time. There were so many people uh, from all streams, all political thoughts came and tried to engage with it. That I didn't see after the final draft NRC, which actually stuck, it was, it surprised everyone that these many, the, the number surprised to everyone. That didn't happen. So, uh, but the issue, as you said, the migration issue, it is not something that we can overlook now. Okay. And uh, particularly, even how um, it doesn't matter how many barriers that you create, but people will manage ways right. of coming there. And particularly when you have similar, uh, uh, say, uh, ancestry, similar uh, uh, groups of people staying here right. on the other side. So, it, it is going to happen. But Anna, what but then the the governments also also should see you know in the northeast as you see or even assam the area has a lot of smaller communities very very you know even among the caste hindus there would be very few right. okay so the the fear is very very palpable mm -hmm. you can even across assam uh, across northeast also you'll find this fear very much there among the people and uh, because and also the identity is very territorial right. linked to the land right. okay so and there's nothing else so there's only land so that itself is a uh, huge thing so i sometimes feel that the government needs to address uh, uh, that issue more. How well to give some amount of incentives to the host communities so that these issues get, um, you know, the conflict uh, right. uh, gets, uh, uh, you know, sorted out because that is one way of going about it. But as you said, the detention camps and all, you know, um, the, the, this, the worry is that the government is not talking about any mechanism. I mean, what will you do? I mean, like if say 10 lakh people remains finally after going through the entire process, what will you do with them? Exactly. I mean, this is not, we, you're not talking about. Everything is ad hoc, you know, in the process. When you reach the, reach the bridge, you'll cross it. Mm -hmm. You know, and this has to do with a lot of people. Right. Their rights, many suicides have happened already. So how are you dealing with it? So that's not, that's not the, uh, the discussion point at this at this time. So it and it should be actually the government should be asked what is your what is your plan. Now every time uh, the Assam Accord said that they will be people who would not would be found foreigners would be deported. So now the government stand is that they can't be deported. That means they will remain. So then. How, how long can they remain then stateless? You have to bring some mechanism to uh, to uh, uh, make them citizens. So what kind of citizens will you make them then? So and also even people who came say after 1971 March 24 date and now they are, they must have spent over 40 years of their life okay in this in this country. What will you do with them? So you need to do bring out some form of mechanism then to address that issue. So we, are, we need to engage with all these things right now. Right. And finally, you end the book with uh, a lot of questions to Assamese society as a whole. Uh, how will this society actually deal with some of the crisis they're facing today, as well as some of the provocations from the right? So could you just talk a bit about that and where you see things going in the coming years? See, that is what, you know, with this problem not being solved for a long time, I think the political parties, particularly the national parties, have been milking this situation. Congress had milked it very well, and now BJP is milking it. So I don't see that BJP will also, is also looking at finding a solution to the problem, to keep the pot boiling, right. okay? So that this pot is going to be kept boiling and uh, to uh, derive as much dividend as possible. So 
as far as BJP is concerned, I feel that it is going to try and communalize the issue as much as possible. Right. And so if you give a little, you take away a little. So, so that the insecurity of the majority community remains. So this is what is, this is how, how I see. But that brings us uh, to, uh, you know, us meaning the uh, community, to a question. Uh, do you want to then call yourself a Hindu first? Or you want to call yourself an Assamese first. Because if you want to call yourself a Hindu first, then what will happen to the Assamese Muslims? You know, uh, uh, they, they also assert their ethnicity right. more than the religion. And many of them have voted for BJP also because of that. Uh, so, uh, so that is one thing. And the other thing is, if you call yourself an Assamese, the, uh, the, uh, uh, so a homia, if you call yourself that then then of course you have to go back to your cultural roots you know uh, like some of the biggest uh, cultural icons that Assam has be it Bhupen Hazarika, Jyoti Prashad Agarwala, uh, Bishnu Rabha you know all of them have spoken about uh, uh, a, a wider uh, kind of you know accept the right. others who have come right. settled by the Brahmaputra and call this the, the land their own and the, uh, the Assam as their matri so as we, we, or everybody a neo Assamese so there's a concept of neo Assamese in Assam no uh, Ohomia uh, uh, so even the uh, Muslims of Bengal origin who had adopted Assamese uh, language they return Assamese in the uh, census so they are also termed as no Ohomia we have poetry we we have a literature on that. So there's general acceptance of that lot. So what will happen to those people if we become, if we, uh, if we uh, fall into the communal agenda right. of one political party? Today it is one political party. Tomorrow it will be somebody else demanding something from right. the community. So it's a question in front of the community. Which way would you like to go? Right. Thank you so much. Sandra. Thank you. That's all we have time for today. Keep watching News Click and the Indian Writers Forum. Thank you.